Hi, everybody. This is GM John Fedorovich from a very hot and humid New York City. Uh, welcome to my Games of the Day recap of the Bilbao Double Round Robin Tournament. Um, round 10 was a little bit disappointing. Three pretty fast draws. Um, not a lot of action, but uh, uh, perhaps some interesting opening theory will uh, liven it up a little bit. So, uh, I'm going to start off with Wesley So playing the white pieces against Magnus Carlsen. Magnus Carlsen clinched the tournament first place in the tournament one round to go. So it seemed, at least to me, and also uh, Ronan Hartsby, who I did the show with, um, uh, both of us predicted a kind of a peaceful round. And I, I don't know what to say, and we said it several times during the show, I'm wondering if the, the double round robin format um, leads to uh, these types of tournaments. It seems like whenever we have a double round robin tournament, um, not for lack of fighting, but it just seems that uh, there, there are lots of draws. Um, and it, it might just be um, the way it is with double round tournaments. So let's get started on the So Carlson. Um, so starts off and with a very solid position. Carlson tries to juice it up with his ragos and things. And if White wanted to play some crazy line here, White probably could have. And Wesley's playing very solidly, and so is Carlson. C5, normal move for Black, preparing pawn takes pawn. And now, I, I don't know. If, if White were trying to win, I'm not really sure if this is the kind of position, because Rook D8 could put a lot of pressure on the pawn. So, so, so plays it very solidly with knight takes d4, and bishop to d7 is a good move. He wants to play knight c6 and keep the pawn structure intact. And so plays a good move here, queen to b3, and Carlson plays solidly knight c6. And, uh, nice in-between move play. Bishop takes, queen takes, bishop takes, queen takes, and now we have a bishop opposite color position. In a bishop opposite color position, it's not always a dead draw. It's usually who has a more attacking bishop. And in this position, you could see that both kings are so solid that nobody has an attacking bishop. So this is really um, pretty dead drawn. Ronan thought that maybe in some cases white could have some hope for getting a little bit of something, perhaps because white can put pressure on the A pawn and black is not able to put pressure on, on uh, white's counterpart, the A2 pawn. So rook c2, rook c8 was good. Rook c7, of course, a very solid move, defending the pawn. You should be three takes. Rook c8, on the queen takes. So just play rook takes c2. Uh, rook to d1, and after queen c3, bishop here, queen c5 defends the pawn. And g3 getting after the king, and the bishop retreats to a safe square. And rook to here, and... and not only is this a safe square, but it covers the eight, which is important because it allows black to offer a trade of rooks and get this rook off at d7. And they take, and now it's just nothing doing here. Uh, for one move, white has maybe an h5 threat, but of course Magnus just goes g6. Um, h5, black could even take or go g5, and black's king will be very safe on g7. So that wasn't going to get white anywhere. So white just plays queen a8, black puts the king on a dark square, and king g2, h5. And I think both players couldn't wait to shake hands here. Queen to b4 takes, and a lot of fooling around, and a draw by repetition. So that was our first game. Um, what can you say? I mean, Magnus won the tournament with a, a game to go, went undefeated, and, uh, and ends the tournament in a solid fashion against Wesley Self. So that was the first game of game of the day. So, so game two is a Karyakin against Wei Yi, Chinese player. Now, one of the things that, that we kept uh, repeating during the broadcast with, with me and Ronan was that, um, I don't know, it's a tough spot for Karyakin to play in tournaments. I know that you, you have to avoid getting rusty, but what if he's got some 